Hey sneak peekers, I'm Brandon, and I'm here for the red carpet of Magpie's premiere at South by Southwest. How did you come up with the idea for this script, and what was that experience writing it like? Uh, so actually the idea came from uh, Daisy, my wife. Um, I picked her up from the airport after she finished a film, and uh, she said, I've had this crazy idea. Um, would you want to write it and we can make it together which is something we've been looking to do together for a while and uh, I said yeah let me sit with it and we kind of just developed it together and I've changed it a lot from her original idea but the sort of the seed of, um, of what she wanted to do is there and uh, it was super rewarding and exciting making something with Daisy for Daisy being able to write for Daisy was a huge privilege because she's one of my favorite actors and being able to like push her and pull her in different places and different directions was really cool and also she was with me every single step of the writing process I'd sort of write a few pages give it to her see what she thought and um, uh, and build it like that so it was really collaborative with her and being able to sort of tailor make a character for her and build a world around her was was really fun yeah uh, I was actually on set doing uh, a film in Canada and there was a little girl playing my daughter and she was unbelievable and super smart, so of course could understand where reality ended and fantasy began. But the initial idea was how strange it is, like these uh, relationships we create on set and for a child to be calling someone else mummy at work. So that was the original thing um, of an actress infiltrating a family. And then as uh, Tom was developing the script, uh, the shift went to following the mother left at home. What drew you to producing this film? Um, I did a Zoom with Daisy and Tom and they talked to me about this idea. At that stage there wasn't a script, it was an idea that Daisy had had based on experience she'd had on set and it, then he kind of expanded it and it just had something so interesting about how you perceive characters and how they can change throughout um, an hour and a half and I th and think that was a super interesting and, and Daisy is an amazing actor and um, really uh, you know they just uh, I could see it was going to be great. I mean the whole script when I first read it was really compelling to me and um, and then I I guess like what drew me to the project was that Daisy came up with the idea she wrote it with her husband she was producing and leading and it's something that I really aspire to do in the future. And uh, so I was just really happy to be part of the project. What were some of the big inspirations for this film? I know it's a bit of a thriller. Um, what kind of stories were you drawing on? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. It's a thriller. It's a kind of neo-noir as well with thriller elements. So we were looking at films by um, Hanukkah. We were looking at some John Demi films. We were looking at some Kubricks like Eyes Wide Shut and The Shining. Um, we were looking at some Fincher films. So across the board, because there's quite a lot of themes going on in the film, quite a few styles and POVs, we were looking at quite a broad range. But yeah, we're, we're kind of in the center of the sort of thriller neo-noir genre. But yeah, quite a few. And it's a joy when you're making a film to look at all these other movies. It's part of the greatness of it. Oh, for my performance, I actually didn't feel I drew on f from other roles, but I think as we were developing the story, and because I was there from the ground up, I just intrinsically knew who Annette was. So that was actually a very natural build of us creating this story and creating this world that she lives in. Yeah, we talked a lot about, I mean, things like Gone Girl, um, it, was, it was kind of trying to find things that were, a, 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 and then things about a woman, like um, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, things that were kind of, and we also talked about other films that were not through it, like Tully, about this idea of how a woman kind of stuck in the situation, and then the next step on to make that a thriller and how you escape. So there were a few, in terms of like uh, energy, a few things like Gone Girl, um, Tully, a lot of Hitchcock things, you know, um, even down to Vertigo, you know, a sort of what you think might be happening isn't quite what's happening, things that are very seemingly simple human uh, relationships and, and dynamics, really sort of subverting them and pushing them to their limits um, in that neo-noir uh, place was really exciting, yeah. I know one of the things you really liked was the the script for the film um, what was the biggest without spoiling it what was the the biggest twist that um, 
really shocked you? I think all of the characters, you don't quite know where you are with them for the whole film. And in a way, all of them reveal true colours of some kind. So yeah, I was super attracted to that. So I think there are various reveals, let's say, um, rather than one big reveal. Yes, um, I don't think this is a, I don't think this gives it away at all. Just the idea that what you think you are watching isn't quite what you are watching, which for me speaks to the human heart. I mean, every single human being carries with them a treasure chest of secrets and how they really feel and think. Um, so to reveal those slowly to an audience is what I wanted to achieve, and I think we do. So I think that surprise of an audience thinking, oh, this is what I'm watching, hopefully by the end they'll realize I was wrong. Uh, what I love about it is that, it's so hard not to spoil the film, <laughs> But what I loved about it is that, especially nowadays, I feel like it's very contemporary because we are so quick to judge with social media and like we think we know everything about people's lives, but then we don't really. And when you dive into like, you know, the intimate part of like people, you realize that there's no like stereotypical way of like, you know, judging someone. And I think this film really shows you that because you have a certain vision about one character and then it completely changes through the movie and it's for all three characters and what I love is that you kind of judge it but then you're like oh I feel for that character because you know he's going through that and it's for all three of them like it makes it very human in a way. I remember reading in some interviews um, that the production was pretty fast I believe um, would you say that's accurate and what kind of like I guess how was the production experience? Fast, slow, stressful? Well, actually, I mean, we had a, about um, almost five weeks to shoot it, um, which is quite, you know, but we were only really in two big locations. But what was quite good about the intensity of having that much time to shoot it there was, is that it added to the atmosphere, I think, of the whole, like, uh, the house that Daisy's in feels very claustrophobic. It feels like she's trapped. And by kind of having this finite amount of time, you build that pressure. And the whole thing feels like that, which we're in a, you know, in a thriller is great. It's a good thing. I wouldn't say it was a fast production. It was a contained production. And because I had done something that was as short, I was like, we can definitely do this. I think... Um, it kept everyone very focused and we were all, it was very intense. So I think it helped with all those relationships that were in the film. So I think it served, the intensity of the process of filming it, I think really served the film. We're a student news organization. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring student actors? Um, listen, be open. Um, uh, don't sort of overthink things because you always want to be open to your director. That's really what I would say. Don't overthink things when you're by yourself because you are always with someone else in your performance. So just always be ready to be receptive to them. Just keep going and do what you love. And um, as long as you don't sell your soul, I will say, you're never going to be deceived because you're, you're gonna, always going to do what you love, and so just keep doing that. I think f for, for me, it's very much like planning out your, make sure, you know, Sam and, um, his, and our DOP, Laura, did a really great job of planning out the shots and knowing where they were going to put the camera. And then it's thinking very clearly, like, what do you need to tell this scene? And if it's slightly stylized, which this is, because it's a noir and you want to look from certain angles, it's like working out what they are that will also give you the whole picture. And talking about the whole the whole pro, the whole the whole kind of feeling of it beforehand so that when you, you everyone knows what they're trying to achieve within those scenes and what the you know that section of the script is trying to do and then you can try and shoot it without too many takes i think once you get stuck doing too many takes that's where you kind of lose your days and the things but we luckily we had a very talented um, group of actors so we got through it quite quite fast uh, watch other films of the genre, I think. Um, watch loads of movies and make m movies as much as you can. Like, get out there and do it. There's no substitute, it seems to me, than making films. So if you can, grab your iPhone, hit the road and make something. But, you know, steal. Steal what you need to from other films. Like, that's one of the great joys of 
being a filmmaker is, is a generosity and a respect in stealing. It's not, you know, condoned. So learn from the masters. Oh, just write, 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 write. I mean, I, I, um, I'm still getting used to um, thinking of myself as a writer. Um, but uh, from my own experience, just get up and do it. Uh, it's scary and it's uh, a very difficult thing because you're doing it on your own, right? There's, there's almost you're doing hours and hours and hours of work for seemingly no reward, but the reward is what it is. And um, the process itself so I think just keep doing it and you know th this is a total dream to be here uh, we always dreamed of being somewhere like here to present our film but to actually be here you think fuck, we're, we're evidence that um, just a little dream cooked up in a car on the way home from an airport can get you here you know awesome and can you give us a, a hook and horns always of course <laughs> sure I can yeah <laughs> 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 a hook of horns. You don't have a hook of horns in England, but yeah, that's. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did. And if you want to watch more of our South by Southwest coverage, please click here.